All right, here we are again, and when I say we, uh, Pastor Steve and Pastor Will, it is our Bible study for Sunday, June 12th. This is called Holy Trinity Sunday, Will. Holy Trinity. Good morning, good morning. Good to see you, <laughs> Pastor Steve. You know, I, I always have to go back and look at notes because uh, I've got an older mind than yours. But I, I found out that this Holy Trinity Sunday has been observed in the church since the 10th century. Uh, the whole Trinitarian controversy out of some of those early councils in the church. But we're not probably going to get too much into the doctrine here today. But we have some wonderful texts. Um, and the first one is from the book of Proverbs. It's been a while since mm -hmm. we've been there. Proverbs chapter 8. Also, um, Psalm 8. Uh, Your glory is chanted above the heavens. Psalm 8 uh, about creation. One of my favorite psalms. And then as... Good Lutherans, we like the book of Romans, right? <laughs> Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. God's love is poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. And then uh, Will, Pastor Will will be in chapter 16 of John. The Spirit will guide you into the truth. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to just open up with a prayer for us today, using the prayer of the day for this coming Sunday. Uh, all of you who are listening, uh, join together with us. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. And so we pray today that you would guide us all to truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and continue to rejoice in the glory that God shares with us. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. 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 Well, I tell you, I, I have to say it's a I fitting a, prayer. I, it's a fitting prayer, mm -hmm. yes. Um, we've got our coffee cups here. <laughs> we just came out of a pastor's meeting, and the first text is from uh, Proverbs. Uh, and when I think about that, it, it gives some interesting background about this woman of wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, you were just mentioning a few moments ago in Proverbs 8, there's a little preface to this reading. Uh, can you read that for us? Sure. Yeah. It says, in the Bible, wisdom is portrayed in terms sometimes human and sometimes divine. Often, wisdom is personified as feminine. That's because the Greek word for wisdom is sophia, and that's mm -hmm. a feminine word. And so in this passage, woman wisdom is depicted not only as the first creation of God, but also as God's helper, rejoicing in God's creation, especially in human beings. Yeah. So now, now folks, we're going to have you go back and read this text. Uh, there, it's posted here for you, but read the text from Proverbs 8. And um, uh, my, my wife's a lot smarter than me. I just go from that, you know, the, 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 being a woman that's much smarter than me, but this this beauty in the uh, text uh, one thing it says in verse 12 is the lord created me at the beginning of his work and re referring to uh wisdom sophia mm -hmm. it makes me think about the book of genesis and how the um the spirit swept over the waters of creation in the beginning you know yeah. now that might be the holy spirit but um i'm inclined to think that this wisdom is is a spirit um in this case as well. Um, well, you know, in verse 27, it says, when he, God, established the heavens, I was there. Mm, there when he drew a circle on the face of the deep. Uh, and uh, Separating so, the, the, the sky from the, from the sea. It's a kind of a, a fascinating uh, thought as well that the Holy Spirit in Greek is a feminine, correct? It, yes, Sophia. Sophia, Sophia. Is, is the Greek word for wisdom. Um, but the word pneuma? That's uh, spirit, breath, wind. Spirit, breath, yeah, wind. But it's, it, it's That's also a, a feminine. It's a feminine. feminine. Even though in some sometimes the Holy Spirit's uh, said is uh, masculine. See, the, the whole thing, in, in, you know, this wraps with the Trinity as well, is that we, we, we are the ones, we human beings um, engender uh, <laughs> these, these spirits um, of God. And, and God, as we know, is, is above that. God is not something that is created. Um, God, God is infinite. Mm -hmm. um, now, this, in this text, it says that, that God created wisdom. Uh, so that would make sense to, to, give a, um, 
to give a gender to it. Um, but this wisdom has been here before the tangible things, before uh, a matter, in a sense. And, and so it does have these connotations of, 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 of being a part of this spirit that it is moving around us. And um, Well, I tell yeah. you what, we're going to, you know, Pastor Rick is going to be a little disappointed because I'm sure he'd like us to talk more about this. Uh, and we'll probably do a little more research before Sunday, but it's it's uh, it's a beautiful text to lay alongside on this Trinity Sunday, uh, Psalm eight. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, o Lord our God, how majestic is uh, your name in all creation! Psalm of praise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I I uh, I love certain parts of this. You know that uh, especially when I. When I look at the heavens, the moon and the stars and all that you have made, uh, who are we as mere mortals that you're even mindful of us? Mm-hmm. You know, I, you probably talk to people sometimes, you know, they get a little, get a little uh, they feel so small that uh, how could God even know they exist? Mm-hmm. I think you talked about that in your sermon. From yeah, a I, had a, I had a woman a few years ago that uh, said she didn't, uh, was, had problems praying with God because she wasn't even sure she, that God even knew she existed. But uh, here is a, a beautiful reminder. So I would tell people if they go out and look at the evening sky and uh, start absorbing the beauty of the universe that uh, um, God's mindful of them as well. I would also add that this, this psalm is in a sense the, the reflection of God's signature in creation. Mm. In creation. That, That's quite poetic. That, that those things that, that you were talking about that we are able to witness, especially in a place like here, like in Naples, the sunset and the sky that's painted by God, you know, that to me, this, this sounds like it's God's signature and God's signature is all around us. And, and um, that could be a comforting thing to someone like, like the woman that you told the story yeah, about to, yeah. to realize that we're, we're all wrapped in this together and, and Oh, God, God has put the bow on top for How us about to witness. That? You know? Now you got me going in a new path. Even when we're <laughs> baptized, God puts God's signature upon us with the Spirit. You are sealed by the That's Holy it. Spirit. Yeah, too, yeah. Signed, you know, with the Spirit and uh, sealed with the cross of Christ forever. So, that, yeah, God's signature on God's our not lives. only claiming us. God's claiming all of creation. That's beautiful stuff. Um, let's see. What about Romans? Oh, Therefore, since we're justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we've obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. I almost didn't have to read that. <laughs> you got that memorized? Just, we're justified by faith through, through God's grace. It is the Lutheran mantra. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I like this too where it says, uh, we have obtained access to this grace. You know, uh, we don't we access that grace really through the Trinitarian understanding too of God, the Creator. The you know, you get out your small catechism and look at the three articles of the Creed, the mm-hmm. Apostles' Creed: God the Creator, God uh, the Redeemer, God the Sanctifier. But in each one of the parts, I I, I would urge you uh, if you're if you have a small catechism, to go through that. And uh, one person said that uh, in looking at the Luther small catechism that. The meanings that he puts forward are kind of um, like job descriptions of the mm. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I like that. Yeah. But they all help us access the grace of God, mm-hmm. right? And it's also, it ties into the, to, to our gospel and to the whole idea of Trinity Sunday. Um, it's, it's very difficult for us to understand this relationship as human beings, this relationship of three persons that, that we call God that is also one in one God. Um, and so uh, understanding itself um, is, is grace. And uh, the fact that we're given just a peek of, of what God is, uh, what God is all about, is, is a graceful act that we stand upon and that, that we can uh, boast about. Um, it was interesting because uh, I was up at the Synod Assembly this past week mm-hmm. for the Florida Bahamas Synod, the Synod that uh, Emmanuel's a part of. And for those who don't know what a Synod is, it's a it's a gathering between all the pastors and deacons, the rostered leaders uh, who meet with the bishop. And um, 
hope was one of the buzzwords going around. There was hope that we were finally gathered together in person after two years, and and um, the hope that we have um, uh, continued to bring to uh, our congregations and and vice versa. The hope that the people that uh, we help lead um, put help uh, give us and put in us. Um, so uh, one of my uh, colleagues up there said, we're hope dealers. And I had to do a double take because I, I thought I, I heard him wrong. And he said, no, no, hope. We're hope, we're hope dealers. And um, as, uh, uh, as ordained pastors, but also as the priesthood of all believers, because we're all priests by our baptism, um, we are dealers in this hope. Well, when and you say we're grace. dealers in hope, in Romans 5, if you look in this uh, verse, what is my glasses here? Verse 3 uh, and 4, this hope has to come through quite a, uh, a journey because yes. it talks about we, are, we, are, we boast in our, in our sufferings. I mean, this is the way life is. Sufferings that uh, can produce endurance. Endurance can produce character. Character Bruce produces hope. But then, as you say, hope does not disappoint us. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, you know, I, I think, is there anybody listening that doesn't have suffering going on in their life in some regard, we, in their personal life or within our communities and all the news we hear now? Mm-hmm. I but, think that, that word produce is, is a, uh, a big word there, and I'm, um, I wish I knew what the original uh, Greek word was, but it, it's, it, to me it almost sounds like, you know, because suffering does produce endurance, but not always. Yeah. So it's, it's almost like suffering has the potential to do this. Endurance has the potential to do this. But if you can go through this, if you can walk through this path uh, that Christ has laid out before us, the, the end product is this hope. And it's a hope that's not ours. It's a hope that's put, been put in us, as verse 5 says, because of God's love that's been poured in our hearts through the Holy Spirit, um, which... We have been on a uh, kick lately talking about the Holy Spirit. <laughs> isn't, isn't that so, a beautiful phrase? Yeah. The, 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 been, God's love has been poured put, into our hearts. Poured into our hearts, which means that our hearts had to break open to have it poured into, right? Um, whether that was done <laughs> surgically or in a, in a very broken way, in a, yeah. in a, in a, in a suffering way. Um, so it, it, it's good news. It's good news for all of us to... To see that our suffering that has the potential to be turned in, uh, into this hope and done in such a graceful way that it's done on no part of our own. It's, it's if we let God change us, if we let God transform us and transform our minds, because um, that's the key. Um, we need to have think like Christ thinks, that this produces this hope in us that that we no longer become afraid we death we have no fear over death or or these sufferings because because god has wrapped us up in in who god is in this whole idea of the trinity <laughs> hey, hey preacher Sorry, i'm ready to preach now i was gonna say preacher you got something going here right <laughs> yeah yeah um all right well let's look at, at john chapter 16 um this is uh a part of that long discourse that jesus has at the end of john's gospel extending from uh, the gathering with the disciples in the upper room and the farewell address. and have been and, in it uh, yeah, for we've, a few we've weeks been now. for several weeks mm-hmm. now. Uh, I will not leave you uh, alone, but rather will surround you, Jesus says, with my presence. And uh, again, in this text, it's very short. Let me just read it quickly. Um, this, this is actually uh, the promise of the paraclete, uh, what sometimes Jesus refers to as the Holy Spirit, the uh, different different names for that. We'll say more about it, but here's the text. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Mm. I really like the first part. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. We, we, we cannot understand, as I was saying earlier, the, the fullness of who God is. But God gives us this glimpse um, in the Trinity. 
I mean, a, a, a question I've been thinking about is, is to ask is, um, who, who do you think God is? What is the image of God um, to you? And, and as we know, our culture's taught us that God is this image of this old man with white hair and a beard sitting on the throne and, and usually pretty upset, <laughs> pretty wrathful. Uh, hurling down lightning bolts uh, <laughs> at us and and um if we go back into the library of of the church the the and have a little rummage sale you'll come to find out that the church fathers this was not the original image of god that they portrayed they portrayed uh, an image of of dancing together of of the persons of the trinity father son and spirit in this dance um together and and this whole idea of three three and one working together um uh, i'll give you an example you know those things i don't know if this is in anymore because this is starting to show my age now those those things those kids had the fidget spinners mm -hmm. and they, they're 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 little things you hold the kids hold them in the middle between their index finger and their thumb and they spin and there's usually three parts to them and when you're spinning them though i, I could never spin them fast enough when you spin it though it looks like it's one thing um, so the f the fidget spinner to me is a good example of 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 what the Trinity uh, what the Trinity is uh, for us. It's something that we can't necessarily see those three parts, but we see it spinning around as one. And 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 they uh, they call that the divine dance, the 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 dance together. Now that's not necessarily an image that we would think about even today as, as God dancing around uh, the three of us, <laughs> Father, Son, and Spirit dancing together. But, um, well, you know, you make me think of this icon that was a part of the oh, church. Yeah. Church. Remember that yes. beautiful icon? I had a picture of it here somewhere because it was done by a Russian Orthodox yes. leader, a Rublev, I believe it Andrei is. Andrei Rublev, correct. And uh, this is this um, uh, icon that depicts the Trinity in a way that it practically, uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are like sitting together, right? They're sitting at a table together. Sitting at a table a together. Imagine that. And you, when you look at this icon, it's like you're invited to come and mm -hmm. sit alongside. That's the great part of this um, piece of art. If you just Google Rublev, R-U-B-L-E-V, uh, Trinity, it'll pop up. But I'm sure it'll be, it might be up on the, on the uh, video here. Um, the great piece about this piece of art is, yes, they're sitting around this uh, table, but there's this open spot in the table right in front of you uh, for, for you and I to be a part of. Um, in a sense, it's the Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit, inviting us into this uh, fellowship, into this meal, into this dance uh, together, um, which is just, just this beautiful image and, and certainly uh, good news. Now, we don't understand it. This is our um, ill-fated attempt as human beings to comprehend it. But to know that we get to be a part of it, um, is that's the good news. That's, that's the grace of it. That's something that you can hold on to that does not disappoint. Because it's an invitation. It's a gift for us. You're on a roll. <laughs> you know, I, uh, again, you folks, if you haven't been out to Emanuel Park, you need to go out there. You're, you're actually in the house right now, too, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, we've we transitioned into the house because it's very hot. And, and as we know, the rainy season has begun. Um, so we have space. We have air conditioning. Uh, we have good seating. And uh, we also have some good food to enjoy afterwards. Um, you know, I think about it, Pastor Steve, uh, the way... Um, Emmanuel uh, works now is very Trinitarian. We have, we have our church, our congregation, which has our communities um, that work in of itself. But we also have our two nonprofits, Emmanuel Academies mm -hmm. and Emmanuel Communities, and together we're this, this triad that's spinning together. Uh, we're the fidget spinner, and 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 we're always trying to um, spin fast enough to look like one organization and i think that's uh, what we continue to do and we hope and pray that god uh continues to let us do that and that we're on the right track well you're inspiring i um i think of all the years that i've been here at this congregation i, I sometimes even go back you know i have these uh, these little things that fly into my mind when we come to trinity sunday 
that took me back when I was a little boy in an old church in Iowa. And it had to be Trinity Sunday because they were singing Holy, Holy, Holy. Oh, yeah. You know, as we came in. But, but what I remember about it was, yeah, I remember the song. Yeah, what's it goes? Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning thy song shall rise to thee. That's about. My mother was playing it on the organ. But I that Sunday in this little church, they used to ring the bell. This there was a bell on top of this little steeple, and there was a rope. And when I came in on one Sunday as a kid, probably five years old, one of the ushers told me I could ring the bell. All right. And I jumped on the rope. And I, <laughs> as I pulled it down, it pulled me up in the sky, up and down like a... Uh, uh, and I remember the congregation singing, Holy, Holy, Holy. Look at that. And you still remember. So that's kind of burned into my mind for this uh, this Sunday. But, it's also uh, the Sunday we uh, traditionally would say the Athanasian Creed. Too, which is, I'm sure, a creed that not many of us are familiar with, nor have said. It's so long that we'd have to have to <laughs> add some special, uh, uh, cut something out to include it. Mm-hmm. But you're making reference to the different creeds, the Apostles' Creed, the uh, Nicene Creed, creed, and the Athanasian Creed. And all of those creeds really hung around this struggle of what it means to be God mm-hmm. in three persons, right? It, it's, it was, our, it's, again, it's, our attempts as human beings to describe uh, who God is and how God works. <laughs> well, I'm just glad that God always breaks beyond the bounds of human understanding. Oh. And uh, it's great to always talk to you. Um, Pleasure. Thanks for yeah, having me. Yeah, yeah. Again, uh, Pastor Steve and, and Pastor Will, for this coming Sunday, may you all be blessed by your presence wherever you are. But we certainly invite you to be a part of our worship here at Emmanuel Lutheran Church. So enjoy your week. And, and again, thanks, thanks for your time spent with us this day. Blessings. Take care.